What's up, everybody? JJ McCarthy is the third option on the Vikings behind Sam Darnold and Nick Mullins. Is that true? Coming out of OTAs, we'll break all that down next, including some stadium news for two teams in opposite directions of each other. All this next on the Gridiron. Welcome into the Grid Hiring. Go ahead and right now, hit that like, subscribe, and follow button down below. Be sure to do that right now or by the end of the video. Up to you. I can't make you do anything, but we would appreciate it if you did it right now. And I want to give a big shout out to one of our affiliates, and that is Vivid Seats. Everything is kind of over right now. You really only got baseball, but you know what? Concerts are going on. It's festival season right now, baby. Everybody knows somewhere in the country there is a festival you can go to if you're into music. They got tickets for shows. You got all that and more, and baseball season is in full swing. So use Vivid Seats. The link is in the description of this video to go get your tickets and go live vividly. Now, we at the house call had our reservations about the drafting of J.J. McCarthy uh, in the first round. We felt that there were plenty of quarterbacks that were ahead of him from a passing standpoint. Uh, obviously, his, his leadership and his championship acumen is there. We've seen it. We know he's capable of being part of a championship team with talent around him and a good defense. He is a bona fide game manager, and we did say if there was a place for him to go to be the best, that he could be, it would be under an offensive-minded coach that is used to grooming quarterbacks and getting the most out of them with a lot of weapons around them. And lo and behold, he lands in Minnesota, which checks every single box. And yet, he is buried on the depth chart behind Nick Mullins, enough said, and a guy who sees ghosts after OTAs. That is concerning, but there's a reason Sam Darnold was brought in and, you know, reports have come out, hey, don't, let's not get to, you know, sound the alarm bells. We're in OTAs. He's the number 10 pick. We knew he was going to be brought along like this. There is still time. All of these things. And yet you can't help but to wonder all of the criticisms that had J.J. McCarthy all over the big board when it came to draft day. There were people who mm -hmm. had him solidly in the first round. There were people that had him, you know, about where... Uh, some of the other guys went, specifically Spencer Rattler, who went in, like, what, the fifth round to the Saints. So, right. J.J. McCarthy was all over the place and where they saw him as a passer, his size, his athleticism, his arm, his actual just raw arm talent. No one was comparing him to the two best arms from a strength perspective in this draft and Drake May and Joe Milton. But they th they said that on the move, out of the pocket, he was one of the most accurate quarterbacks. And we saw it time and time again when he had to make a big throw to kind of keep a drive going or, you know, avoid a sack, things like that. He was able to do that. So, Sammy, I want to kick it to you here, man. Obviously having, you know, you had questions about your quarterback in Miami for, for years. Right. And, you know, a lot of the same things were, were questioned with him. You know, how can he be a good passer? Does he have the raw, you know, passing capability? Does he need people around him to succeed? What do you make of this sort of early sort of off-season news, as we like to call it? about J.J. McCarthy's development post-draft? It's definitely rough for J.J., for sure. Um, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on him, like pressure that he really, I don't think, really deserves yet. Um, look, I think I'm one of those people who thought that he was going to fall very far in the draft. Um, this is just a case of a QB coming in and is just surrounded by a lot of veterans, a lot of lights since he just won a national championship. You're going to a, a place like Minnesota where they just got off of a quarterback, right? Justin Jefferson, you got to deal with a great weapons room. And now the expectation is, okay, show us what you can do. And of course, they brought in Sam Donald for insurance. They brought in Nick Mullins for insurance. We all know how Nick Mullins ended up. It really just didn't work out. Nick Mullins is just, he is who he is. With Sam Darnold, there's a bit more optimism around him because, well, I mean, he was under Shanahan. Maybe he learned something over there. Maybe he is able to grow more under Kevin O'Connell. But then we get to J.J. McCarthy. And J.J. McCarthy coming in was looked at as a QB that you have, or you're going to have to develop. Even after he won a national championship. So it is a bit concerning 
that he's third right now in the depth chart. However, I do think we got to remember what our opinion on JJ McCarthy was at draft day. And that was as a developmental prospect, you're going to have to give him a little bit of time and it's going to, it is going to take a bit. Now, uh, you m did mention Tua Tagovailoa, my QB, who is in the midst of some apparently very interesting uh, talks concerning his contract. With Tua, it was a bit different because with Tua, I think his questions were more injury related than they were really talent related because the talent on the field kind of spoke for himself. Um, when he was at Alabama before his injury, things were going very, very well. It came to a point where he was playing through injury and he was going toe to toe with the, you could argue, the biggest, uh, the in the middle of his best, the best college QB season ever, Joe Burrow. He went toe to toe with him in one of those games. So that means something. With JJ McCarthy, it's different because you're coming fully healthy. One, two, you're going, you're off the back of a national championship, right? And you have to go through a gauntlet to win that championship, mind you. But on top of that, JJ McCarthy, I mean, the expectation is you're part of a winning organization, a winning um, program. We expect you to come in and do something a bit similar. So it's it's definitely it's it's a, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because on one hand you want to you know see this guy JJ McCarthy immediately succeed, but on the other hand it's like well are we really going to rush the process are we really going to like you know speed run this despite the fact that coming in coming to draft and we said you know what he's probably going to be a developmental and and a bit of a reminder too look just because you drafted in the first round does not necessarily mean you have to start day one that's not now in my opinion if you're that talented enough and you have the you know the resume in college and you have the and the eye test matches absolutely go out there and start i have no problem with that however with jj mccarthy it was a bit different because a he's hella young b well quite frankly we didn't see him throw much michigan was a run it down your throat team so i think we got to take a step back relax i know everybody's always going to be comparing him to bo nix and other qbs in this draft class but quite frankly I think a lot of people are taking this uh, report a little too seriously. Give the kids some time. It's the off season. Of course, we're going to react to a report like this. I say, give the kids some time, give them a full year, have them get some run, and then let's make a conclusion. Because if we make a conclusion right now, it, it's going to be a very, it's going to be just, you know, rough when he starts to succeed later. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's kind of funny, too, because if you look at all of these rookie quarterbacks that are currently, you know, some of them are clearly going to sit. We already knew they were going to sit. They were brought in to develop uh, even regardless of I mean, Drake May. There's very little doubt in a lot of people's minds that he's right. not going to be this like, you know, everyone knows it's Jacoby Brissett right now, unless yeah, something crazy be. happens. Right. And he's way ahead of schedule, which all reports out of there say that that's not the case. He's shown flashes, but he has things he needs to work on. That's all the coaches have said. But, you know, the funny thing is, is that you kind of see the difference in media in the areas that these quarterbacks are in. You look right. at Chicago and, you know, everyone, the only thing that's come out of Chicago is, is Keenan Allen's uh, hot mic where he gets underthrown and has to completely like go into a walk and catch an over the shoulder, like rainbow from Caleb Williams, like 20 yards down the field. And all he said is hell nah. Right. And so now we're like, oh, is Caleb Williams un underperforming? And are these throws not happening? Or is he not on, on progress with what they want to do? You know, and it's, it's the media doing this right now. Because right. those, those things don't come out from the team. The team social media is not out there, you know, dogging their, their number one draft pick in Caleb Williams in Chicago. It's the media who's there for some of the, the open practices and things of that nature, right? But then you look at, like, teams like, you know, the Commanders, who are in Washington, only positive things come out of there about, you know, Jaden Daniels. Only positive things come out of New England about Drake May. J.J. McCarthy, oh, he's clearly the third best quarterback because he's taking snaps behind Nick Mullins and, and, and you know, Sam it doesn't Darnold. make sense. Yeah, Sam Darnold. It doesn't make sense. And so what you see is, is that it's, it's media in a slow time right now driving a story that's going to get 
views, it's going to get likes, and it's going to get playtime. And honestly, I kind of feel like shit about even talking about it because these young guys, these these kids, essentially, especially in my perspective, because I'm like at least 10 years older than every single one of these guys, they are just getting their feet wet. I mean, J.J. McCarthy started right. the draft process. The only quarterback who started the draft process the same lateness as J.J. McCarthy was Michael Penix Jr. And we already kind of know that Michael Penix Jr. isn't playing a game this year, right? So the only quarterback we should we can really compare who was, you know, didn't have like an, an extra month head start in preparation for the draft, right? Because they weren't really in a bowl game. They weren't in, in the college football playoff. They weren't in that, right? The only two, like there, every other quarterback that got drafted in that in the in the in the first round, outside of JJ McCarthy and Michael Penix, didn't play any. Didn't play in their bowl game. They didn't go to you know anything else. They pulled out. Right. They went and started their draft preparation. So they got a solid month and a half, two month head start on these guys. Because and, and so you know we are sitting here and trying to compare apples to oranges here. And you know you haven't heard anything negative about Michael Penix out of Atlanta. It's just been positive. Positive in Washington, positive in New England, right? And then you get to Chicago and Minnesota. And for some odd reason, the local media there and the media in general wants to to, to get clicks. I think a part of that is is also that um, the media is liking towards certain characters. Um, I don't think a lot of people are big fans of Caleb Williams, okay? Caleb Williams is a very, you know, he's very... He's an extrovert, like, much like me. He's very out there. He he definitely, you know, flaunts his personality. He he's definitely one of those people who knows how good he is. Now, granted, it's a bit early to start acting like that with somebody who hasn't proven anything in the league. However, if he thinks he can do it and he can back it up, who am I to say? Right? With JJ McCarthy, it's a little similar. With JJ McCarthy, he's a national champion. Okay. And he he's a national champion. Granted who was the quarterback on a very run heavy team. So immediately everybody's thinking to themselves, well, if he's a QB one on a run heavy team, how is he a 10th overall pick? There's gotta be something wrong with this game. So what happens? They get put on a microscope. They get put under, they get put under a lot of pressure. With Michael Penix and Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix and Jaden Daniels, with Jaden Daniels, for example, he just had a Heisman season, right? He just, he just won the Heisman, okay? And he, if you talk to him in, and his personality, you'll see, oh, wow, he's such a good kid. Oh, my goodness. This guy's better than, than Caleb Williams all of a sudden. He's better. He's the best QB in the draft. It's how they, it's how the media starts to feel about a certain personality. With Bo Nix, it's very similar. Very, very, you know, head down. Everybody hated the pig, but now all of a sudden, oh, Bo Nix is actually not turning, not turning out that bad. You know, maybe Sean Payton wasn't right. Maybe Sean Payton was right, right? And the same thing can be said about Michael Penix. With Michael Penix, the hate was not necessarily towards him. It was always towards the fact that, well, quite frankly, he should not be in Atlanta. He should be somewhere else. So people were never going to hate Michael Penix in the first place. Also, the media has a sentimental spot for a loser, for an underdog. Okay, once you get to the top, Brady knows this. Patrick Mahomes knows this. All the all-time greats know this. Once you get to the top, the everybody starts pointing their arrow up because really everybody's don't. like we gotta we gotta get these guys down we gotta take them off their pedestal with caleb williams and jj mccarthy they're coming from the height of their respective uh careers caleb williams has had an amazing college career jj mccarthy just won a national championship okay what this means is everybody's like you know what we're going after him now jj mccarthy remains to be seen if he can really like do anything outside of just hand the ball off right obviously he has some traits but he's gonna need some work so i think the media really needs to again calm down let's not point let's not like point our fingers at at a jj mccarthy or point our fingers at some of these young, you said it they're young qbs like they're still learning these guys are still like the nfl is a completely different ball game okay it is so we gotta relax like straight up like minnesota that camp whoever leaked that stuff gotta take a chill pill i feel like so many people are overreacting yeah i would agree with that and you know it, we see it every year we know this is a, a yearly yearly sound bite and like you said a little bit of it plays in from the the mentality that the person has 
sort of how they've been perceived. But, you know, like you said, Caleb Williams has been under scrutiny, like, day one, essentially. Right. He's been under scrutiny. Every choice decision he's made has been under From a microscope. Mormon. And it's yeah. because he, everyone knew he was going to be a number one overall draft pick. Right? Right. Everybody knew that J.J. McCarthy or, or believes that J.J. McCarthy was carried by his team because the stats weren't there from a passing perspective. These two you know, quarterbacks who also go to teams that are hoping to turn the corner, have a lot of talent around them. I mean, you look at, at, at you know Chicago's wide receiver core and their weapons, it's insane. You look at Minnesota, we already know what they have there. And so not only did they have their spotlight on for, you know, being champions, being at the top, being on the pedestal. Right. And under scrutiny from day one, like you said, it, the whole purpose of once you get to the top is everybody wants to watch you fall. Like there's like once that happens, the only thing that people are waiting for is the is when you come back down there. And I think that's what's happening here. Like it's the off season, man. This is clickbait. Now, you know, if we're into, say, you know, game two of the, the preseason and J.J. McCarthy's playing, you know, five minutes left in the fourth quarter against Scrubs, who are trying to make a roster spot, then yeah, you can start to go, that. okay, Sam Darnold's probably starting and, you know, maybe J.J. McCarthy's not even close to where we thought he was. And can he right. catch up? Then I maybe we'll have this, but it's if, it's, if towards the fall, like maybe July. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If if if, if towards the fall, uh, McCarthy is still struggling uh, to do anything at OTAs and then at training camp and then preseason comes around and he still doesn't seem to have the hang of it. I mean, we could. It might be yeah. another uh, Trey Lance situation, but I'm ringing I, the bell for sure. <laughs> the alarm's I, going off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But again, we're still in June. So I think right now, take our time. Let's move up. Let's move forward. It, it's just reports. You said it yourself. It's the off season, man. And speaking of off season, we're going to get into some talk mm. about the only things that really matter in the off season, which are funny stories and things that just don't seem to make sense. And we're going to start in Carolina, mm. where they have been greenlit. I believe on a six hundred million dollar renovation of that stadium. Now, mind you, this comes just weeks after somebody did the math and proved that over the course of a football season, and what you would pay in cable over the course of that football season, it would be cheaper to go to every single Carolina Panthers game than to watch it on TV. Sheesh, man. So, sheesh. I understand the need for facilities to attract off, you know, uh, free agent talent, make people want to stay there. You know, upgrade your facilities for your patrons and your fans and your players and your crew and your staff. However, it's kind of like polishing a turd. It's like it's like going and watching like a really bad high school production of like. I don't know, the Lion King. And I mean, like, I'm not talking like, you know, a really good school. I'm talking like a Midwestern school that lives, it's like in the smallest county in the state. It's got like the one kid plays like five different roles and he's like, forgets that yeah. he changes costume one he's time. The brains of the enti- he's the brains of the entire play. Like that style play, but you're going to see it in like Broadway style facilities. <laughs> My right? Like that's kind of what it feels kind of like. Yeah, like the product's not good, but at least you're comfortable, I guess. I mean, I don't, it always seems to astonish me, like, and this isn't the only only time we've seen this. I mean, up until this, this coming season, the Arizona Coyotes were playing in a college, college stadium, college barn, as it was called in hockey, of about 3,500 people. That's how many people could fit, and it was a sold out. That would sell out the stadium, 3,500 people. Mind you that most hockey teams will play in a basketball arena that houses like 50,000 people, <laughs> 50, 60,000 people. So that tells you kind of that thing. So Carolina has been rebuilding since Cam Newton won the MVP. That was it, that it's been downhill since then. And I find it hard to, to, to sit here and be excited 
if I'm a Carolina Panthers fan, that we're getting a new stadium. And it's like, like I said, it's like, great. I'll, I'll at least have shiny new billboards to watch us suck. You know, it's like getting a, it's like getting a, a present for Christmas. It's just really nicely wrapped. And you open it, and it's just a pile of dog shit, like literal dog shit in the box. You hide it at first, and then you get it as it's shit in a box. Like, that's kind of what this is. You're, you're 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 wrapping it real nice, but you still haven't you you like we don't even know if Bryce Young's the answer, and like that's the, isn't that funny? We were just talking about how JJ McCarthy is getting all this screwed. Yeah. We haven't heard a fucking thing about Bryce Young. Well, I think it's more because Bryce Young is like getting like it, it's been acknowledged that his first year was kind of much like Trevor Lawrence's a throwaway year. That's what everybody's saying. Everybody's like, oh, you know, you know that, that first year. That first year was just an absolute fluke. You guys saw it. Frank Reich didn't know what a damn thing. He didn't know how to run a, a damn organization. Uh, he didn't know how to lead men. He was just terrible. We fired him. He, he has nothing. We have Dave Canellis now. Everything's going to work out. And I hope it's the case, right? I mean, I would hope that, that, that Bryce Young becomes a better QB this year uh, with a brand new head coach, a brand new play style. Hopefully a coach that caters to him. They brought, they added some pieces to the offensive line. But my thing is this. We're still not very sure how good this or how bad this Carolina Panthers team is going to be. We're not very sure. So the fact that they're like going, you know, all in on getting, you know, these renovations. I think, and I'm a firm believer in this. I personally believe. If you want to make reservations, make sure your team is good first, because you're making reservation, you're making, you know, renovations, making very comfortable seats for people who are not going to show up. They're just not. They're not. Yeah. We saw last year how empty and, and mind you, I want to remind everybody, Carolina, when Cam Newton was there. That place was a madhouse. That place was energetic. And who wouldn't be energetic for a guy like Cam Newton in his play style, right? However, times have clearly changed, okay? Gone are the days of, of MVP Cam, okay? Unfortunately, that's just the past. Right now, I'm no businessman, mind you, okay? This is strictly me in my mind, just like throwing things at the dart. If your team is trash, stop making renovations. Become a good team and be like, hey, you stuck with us through all this. Here's your reward. Instead of saying, yeah, we suck, but here are some new seats. Here's a new res renovation. Here's this. Here's that. And then on top of that, how bad are we as a society that it is more expensive to watch TV from your couch than it is to go to an actual game? Now, I live in Miami, where that is not the case, okay? So I am not that blessed. However, if I'm a Panther fan, despite the fact that this is the case, I'm still not going. I'm not, because who would want to watch hot, steaming trash over, uh, mind you, in a division that has gotten better? So it's just, un look, look, I know it, I know. Business is business. You want to make renovations. It'll get you more money and stuff like that. Well, actually, you're spending a lot of money. But you're, you're spending a lot of money hoping that in the future, you know, it benefits. However, I, I just think that Carolina right now is at a spot where, you know, you got to wait and see, right? Like, there, there's, like, so many question marks. And, and, and the fact is David Tepper and Frank Reich and that entire front office really, really, really uh, crapped the bed when it came to handling the, the Bryce Young situation. They really did. So, look, I hope Bryce Young becomes the, the franchise QB that they're looking for. However, right now, it's just like, yeah, let's get more renovations for empty seats. I, I don't get that. Yeah, it makes no sense. And and I'm a big car guy. I like cars. But I actually learned to drive a manual transmission in a 1991 Cavalier. Let me tell you about the 1991 Cavalier. Sure, it had a five-speed manual transmission. Sure, it had a 2.2 liter. But in 1991, a 2.2 liter was only good for 95 horsepower. Okay? Mm. 
So it's like putting shiny new rims, racing tires, and Recaro racing seats inside of a 1991 Cavalier. It doesn't change the fact that it has 95 horsepower and you're going to lose every fucking race you get in, okay? Mm -hmm. It does not matter. <laughs> it just looks better now. Okay? That's it. That's it. Like It's like getting a new paint job on it, <laughs> throwing some flashy rims, new seats, new interior. It doesn't change the fact the motor's a fucking dog, all right? Like you, There's no AC still. It's just yeah. not... It, Windows it, are hand crank. Yeah, like, for real. Like Legitimately, there's nothing to it, and it makes no sense. But they're not the only ones who are looking for a new stadium. We've already kind of... We have a blog up on our website right now talking about the Bills, the Jags, and the Titans who are all approved and working towards a new stadium uh, that's going to be, you know, top of the top of the line, new, you know, everything like that. The Kansas City Chiefs are in the same predicament. And the funny thing is they have a similar situation that the Chicago Bears, who we recently we just talked about with Caleb Williams, were going through with the city of Chicago where the city of Chicago was willing to make renovations and, and changes to Soldier Field to keep the Bears in Soldier Field. The problem was none of those renovations were adding more seats. Soldier Field is the least capacity NFL stadium that's still in use, it, and it by a large margin. It takes up one of the smallest footprints uh, per, by acreage of any NFL, NFL stadium by a large margin. The Kansas City Chiefs have been playing at Arrowhead for a very long time. Arrowhead's been around for 30 plus years. They are looking for a new stadium. The mayor of Kansas City has stated that they have passed legislation to cover up to 70% of the renovation costs or the cost in general of either a new stadium or renovations to Arrowhead to keep the Chiefs and the Royals, who are also in this, and that's a little baseball tie to this, in Kansas City. And the big difference between, say, the Bears, who ended up buying uh, acreage in Arlington Park, well, I think it was like 396 acres, a massive area. It was an old race, uh, horse racing uh, complex. They're going to then tear down and build a new stadium there. This is the plan, at least. The difference between the Bears and the Chiefs is, and we discussed this a little before we started this recording, the Bears were not winning. The Chiefs are a large draw. They sell out a lot of their a lot of their their games, regardless of how. Like they they have not had. I don't think they've had a game yet where they haven't sold out. Even when they weren't winning Super Bowls, when Matt Castle was the quarterback, Alex Smith was the quarterback, they were selling out because they were consistent playoff contenders. Kansas City cannot let them leave. Chicago wanted the Bears to stay downtown because of you know hey the taxes, certain things like that, the revenue. They split, you know, they were able, the city was able to make a lot more money with the Bears playing in Soldier Field. This is somewhat of a different situation. This situation with Kansas City is that they are essentially in the midst of a dynasty. There's no other ways to say it. This is a dynasty. And, you know, it's, it, you know, back to back Super Bowls, they've had multiple consistent Super Bowl appearances. This is what domination looks like. The Royals, not so much, but, you know, hey, Kansas City is a loyal fan base. They love their teams. There, I don't see Kansas City leaving. I don't know if they would do something similar to what the Bears did and build somewhere locally, but just not in the same spot. That being said, it is very interesting that a team that has won multiple Super Bowls has to sort of, in this offseason of flux, pressure local, you know, voters and local politicians and the local government into willing to do this for them. I, I think w the thing is, is that, and unfortunately it's gonna have to be like, come down to something outside of football, right? This is more than, this is more of an outside of football thing because I think people are seeing the prices and how high they are and people and local Kansas City taxpayers are thinking to themselves, I am not paying for another stadium i don't care how good our team is keep things where they are keep things that keep things like our team is winning that's cool keep us here however you don't need to make re renovations we're going to pull up anyway okay we're going to we're going to to make things happen we're going to turn out why are you why are you making us pay more money 
to renovate your building or go build a new building, which means what? Tearing that old building down, building another one up. What does that what what, what does that mean? That means it's more money you got to spend. So now that, so then during this uh, during the summer everybody's thinking, "Well, they're not going to be in Kansas City anymore." That that that's what it came to. Like people are like, "Oh, well, we're not, we're not going to be in Kansas City because you guys don't want to pay our tax." This is why this is why it's it's very odd. So for one for one organization, it's like you suck right now. You have no leverage. Why are you doing this? And that's the one who wanted the most money. They wanted two exactly. billion dollars to build a brand exactly. new ballpark district, right? Not just a stadium, an entire entertainment district centered around the ballpark. The, ro Boy. the Royals and the Chiefs, and and I don't think the uh, well, the, uh, the Chiefs were only going to get eight hundred million dollars in that bill to renovate Arrowhead, right? So that's what that was. And now they've switched to this 70% coverage, which is interesting. And like you said, for a it's team, for, for an area, yeah, for an area that, that is ingrained in like their chief fandom, you know, How much and I get it. You yeah. know, I get, it. you know, money's tight, things like that. No one wants to pay more when it's like, it's like paying and you're never going to get to go to the game. You know, like it, it, you're, you can't even, you can't afford to go to the game because they're you know and you're, you're now you're getting nickel and dimed at the at the register or these other you know when you buy things to pay for a stadium that hosts a team that you can only ever watch on tv that you have to pay for right but for for that and i think that you know in a lot of situations where we have public uh funded programs you know the ones that pass and have a lot of like uh positive outcome are the ones that uh the little man you know the people that are paying for it the taxes the, the taxpayers get a kickback you know they get you know if you're if it's a 20 year tax thing well hey pay for a fucking sunday ticket or something for us or you know do give us a discount on on tickets give us something if right. we have like a, if we're like can like we're inside this area that's going to be paying these taxes give us something back like we're giving you a football team that i can't go watch and that's kind of what happens here. And, you know, that's why a lot of these tax bills get turned down because it's like, hey, I'm not going to play there. But like, as you said, the Kansas City Royals, who really haven't been great, you know, they won a World Series in the last, you know, 20 years at least, but they haven't been great. You know, they're saying they're not even going to play at Kauffman Stadium past 2030. They're, so so they, have, they have put the mark down. Hey, yeah, yes. They're done. They're done yeah. there. Yeah that's, yeah, that's crazy. And, so. you know, and we've seen this happen. The Oakland Athletics are moving to Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, like this is not rare. And the Raiders forced their way out of Oakland. They're in Las Vegas. That was a the loyal Rams fan base too. Louis. That was a you know, loyal the Rams, fan base. Okay. Yeah. The Rams left St. Louis. Mm -hmm. The Chargers left San Diego. You know, this is not on her. Hell, the Colts packed up a fucking truck in the middle of the night and moved to Indianapolis. Okay, so understand it's an evil like, world. Look, NFL, it, there's no loyalty in sports, man. They, they, the, it, there's no loyalty to players. There's no loyalty to fans, man. This is just the business side of things in the in the sports world, man. It's it's very unfortunate. Yeah. But with but but in the case of like like o Oakland and San Diego, those fan bases were loyal. It was more just you know what? Yeah, you're loyal, but we'd get more money if we were in LA. And that, that's that's really it. Yeah. That, that's L.A. or Las Vegas. Let's go because uh, L.A. Uh, Las Vegas is like the entertainment capital of the world. L.A. is well, L.A. So, but now you're stuck with Chargers fans not really, you know, being there at games. It's just kind of just like it's all. It's never really a, a, a really a home game like it is at say an Arrowhead, like it is at say a Green Bay Pack, the Green Bay Packers or the New England Patriots. You'll never see any team taking over those stadiums. However, in LA, it's easy to take over. But it's it's just again corporate greed, um, the economy, taxpayers essentially saying what the hell. And yes, seventy percent is a lot. I credit them for like, hey, you know what? We'll give our cut. Now you could say, I would guarantee you, it's so tight that taxpayers are still around. Casey are still going to say no. They're still yeah. going to say no to it. You know, it'd be funny. Like, I don't think they're going to leave. I'm going to preface this with, I don't think they're going to leave, but like, how funny would it be if like the chiefs were like, yeah, we're going to go to a new stadium. 
We'll bring a couple hundred million dollars to help renovate wherever we go. We also like Las Vegas. And they move into <laughs> the Raiders home right stadium next, and just next. beat the shit out of them twice a year afterwards. Like, hey, Ruby. Yo, yo how no, <laughs> no, because I, I can actually imagine that. That'd be so disrespectful. So like, disrespectful, imagine, but imagine, hilarious. Like, the Raiders haven't been able to like get over the hump in like decades, and and then here come the Chiefs in their own state. Like, yeah, you guys are Las Vegas, but we want to be in Vegas too. And Vegas just like you know how Vegas is. Vegas doesn't care. Oh, it's the champs. Let's bring them on in. Nope. You guys can bring Taylor Swift with you. Bring it all. Y'all. We, we can get her on the Strip right now. Residency at any hotel. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. You could just but do I that mean, easily. I mean, all jokes aside. I don't really know where they would go. I, I don't know where they would go. They have been in Kansas City from the start. This isn't like a, an expansion team. This isn't like, you know, like anything of that nature. They have been there since the get-go. And I can't think right now of any place that doesn't have a professional football team that could support or would want to support a professional football team and realistically, the only place that has, you know, at least two other professional sports teams. I'm thinking of it now. Like, is there a team in like, man, what's what state am I thinking of? I mean, Arizona. New York, already, New York already has two teams. Yeah. Uh, well, no, they got one. They got uh, the. Um, you got, oh yeah, because New Jersey, right? But that's, <laughs> I know, I know what you're saying, okay? Uh, Pennsylvania has two. Like, if Pennsylvania can have two teams, I'm pretty sure there are some, like, Midwest. Ohio's teams. got, what? No, Ohio's, Ohio's got two, got Cleveland, Cleveland and Cincinnati. And Cincinnati, right? My, uh, Florida has three. Florida has Tampa, Jacksonville, and Miami. Yeah. LA has a million. Um, man, I mean, there really isn't. It would be, it would be. It would be an atrocity, but they could move to St. Louis. St. Louis. Yo, you know what? Just down the road, bro. St. Louis kind of makes sense thinking about it. The St. Louis Chiefs has no ring to it, though. No. that that's disgusting. Like that, may, like I rather just like keep it the St. Louis Rams, bro. Like that. that just, oh my god! At you're that like, point, bro. Like there's no you're ring to just, imagine you're know. taking an entire franchise literally uprooting it and putting it in a completely different city and that same city is gonna have to act like they're champs like can you imagine that they're gonna have to, they're gonna be like yeah we're three-time champs man yeah we're we're, we're gonna we're we're, we're, two, we're back-to-back champions look, yeah well, look at us and then that that other team i would i would feel so bad for the kansas oh team. my god bro i see i, I don't feel I, so terrible I, I feel like it's gonna be more of a, a chicago bear situation than say an indianapolis colts St. Louis Rams, San Diego right. Chargers situation. I don't, I don't see them doing that. That doesn't make sense for them. I just think it would be funny. <laughs> it would be. Wait, wait, while we're on a, on the topic, what team do you think would just like has the, you know, what team would you like guess if there was a team that they were just gonna like completely like yeah this franchise is cooked we're pulling them out what team would it be? Oh man, um, what team? I think. You'd have to say, like, I'd say the Jaguars are up there, bro. Like the Jaguars, think about the think about the prestige of the Jaguars, bro. There really isn't any. There really yeah. isn't. I mean, so realistically, you have to remember, right? Like, there was the Houston Oilers that essentially became the Tennessee Titans. Right. The Cleveland Browns became the Baltimore Ravens oh after the Baltimore gosh. Colts left. And I then became the Baltimore, and then and then the Cleveland Browns came back. <laughs> Right, I'm surprised the Cleveland Browns haven't like like how long have they been so bad that they're still a team, man? I know those sponsorships and I know those fans are so loyal because there's no way, man. I mean, I, when, when the best player that you can honestly say you've had in the last 20 years is an offensive lineman and a great offensive lineman, let's not yeah, get okay. straight legend. Yeah, he but he's still an offensive lineman, which is the most thankless spot in all sports, realistically. Like, yeah. Uh, if I had to choose a team that I think would that would leave, like just pack up in the middle of the night and jet, like the Colts did, I mean, a part of me wants to be petty and just be like, one day the New York Jets ownership just wakes up and realizes they don't want to deal with the New York media anymore, and they just fucking dip. 
<laughs> what team has no Super Bowls though? Like I'm I'm wondering oh. what, team has, what team has no Super Bowls. It's gotta be a team with no Super Bowls, right? Because they're not gonna they're not gonna uproot it. Well, you know what? If they're not gonna uproot the Vikings who have no Super Bowls, right? So so here we go. All the teams that do not have a Super Bowl, are you ready? Go ahead. Buffalo Bills, Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, Arizona Cardinals, Tennessee Titans, Cincinnati Bengals. Cleveland Browns, Detroit Lions, Houston Texans, Minnesota Vikings, Jacksonville Jaguars, and Los Angeles Chargers. Wow. That's a lot of franchises that don't have yeah. a ring. So one, uh, two, up three, until last year. four of them, four of them are, I think Carolina, was Carolina an expansion team at one point in time? I think they were. I would imagine. Yeah, because they were founded. Carolina was an expansion. They're not a... 1995. Detroit is one of those franchises where... Had it not been for last year, yeah. I would have said pack it up because Detroit, up until they got Dan Campbell, were such a terrible organization and an organization that, granted, they had legends, right? The great Barry Sanders, the great Calvin Johnson. But, bro, like that franchise was actually trash. Like when they made the last year was the first time they made the, the like, Last time, last year was the first playoff win in how long? 30 plus years? Something like that, yeah. I mean, that's almost Dolphins level, but at the very least, I know they're ancient. At the very least, the Dolphins have the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. The, the, the Lions, man, bro. Another funny would be the Carolina Panthers dumped $600 million in a renovating that stadium. No one shows up and they leave. <laughs> Yo, that'd be hilarious. No, no, because think about it. Think about it. But that's they're setting themselves up for that to happen though, right, Joe? Like, like think about it. They're making all these payments and the team sucks. Oh and eight. Why am I showing up to your comfortable seats? Now, granted, these are down the line. I, I would imagine these renovations are down the line. The way they have set themselves up though, giving up those first round picks that are so valuable. Oh man. Oh man. I mean, the Arizona Cardinals go back a very, very long time. Like, they're one of the oldest football teams in existence. And a lot of people don't know this. They were actually based in Chicago. <laughs> 1898. No Super Bowls. <laughs> like, almost don't be a fucking football team anymore. <laughs> that's some baseball That's some baseball level longevity of not winning a Super Bowl. The Lions aren't far behind 1928. The Browns, 1946. Granted, they took some years off in there. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, like, that's kind of what we're talking about here. Like, it, would, it would take something astronomical for the Chiefs to do an Indianapolis Colt leave in the middle of the night, or a or a, a Baltimore Colt, I should say. Um, or, you know, some of these other teams that have moved out of their areas. I don't see that happen. Yeah. Realistically, it's not going to happen. Is it funny to, to, to think about and to have these conversations? Absolutely. That's the time of the year we're in, people. If you're not if you're not watching this video to at least laugh a little bit about some of the outlandish shit we just said and be like, oh dude, that would be hilarious. I don't know what to tell you, bro. It's 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 there's nothing else to talk about right now. No, nah, you can nah. either buy into mainstream media bullshit or you can have a good laugh with us. It's up to you. I don't I don't care. <laughs> not for real. I mean, I, I, look look what, what the NFL is. We're in the middle of the NBA draft, and it's just like Ronnie James was just drafted, and that's going to get everybody popping. And after that, the NBA is going to be at a stalemate for about a couple months. So, yeah, you guys look, let's face it, as sports fans, we're kind of cooks, okay? If you don't, if you don't like baseball, it, you're done, okay? It's over. The NHL is over. Con uh, by the way, uh, shout out to the Florida Panthers, my home team, absolutely winning the Stanley Cup. I absolutely love it. This is. Let, let me tell you, man, I'm going to try to attend the parade this Sunday. It's going to be very, very lit. I'm glad a team from Florida could get a, the championship done. I saw a championship in my lifetime, Joe. I'm so excited. Another championship added. You, you guys about almost fumbled the bag. It, it was it was so it, bad. It doesn't matter if we almost... It doesn't matter. We won the chip. That's all that matters. And we followed the Miami formula. Going up 3-0, choking it, and then going and then winning in in a not very dominant fashion, but a very <laughs> grind set fashion. That I absolutely that is so Miami, man. Not really, but it is. 
Yeah, exactly. I don't think Miami's a grind set uh, society. I, I will say yeah, that. Definitely a football party. team. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, their, their <laughs> football team is. Look, man, I, I, I will not cut ties with the, that football team for as long as I live. But, man, shout out to the Panthers. Look, we're in for a long off season, man. It's still yeah. a couple of months away before football season. and It really is. Man. But we will be here to cover all of the football news yes, as sir. it happens. You can guarantee it. <laughs> Even when there is no news, we make our own news. The Kansas City yes, Chiefs sir. are going to St. Louis. You heard it here first. It's not happening. Oh. It'd be hilarious. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. And to be sure to check out our website, which will be in the description of this video. See all our blogs. Check out our affiliates. And be sure to give Vivid Seats a look. If you're going to any venue, Vivid Seats has tickets for you. And until next time, this has been the Gridiron. I'm Joe. That's Sammy. Peace. Peace.